So guys, uh, the weather's not been brilliant, but we've been busy anyhow, just taking delivery of two new freezers. This one there, the one on the other side. These are 200 litre freezers and they're kind of uh, specially made for outhouses. Uh, which I didn't know until I went onto um, a site that kind of, um, what do you call it, like reviewed, reviewed freezers and stuff like that. So that was quite interesting to find out about that. So anyhow, we've been busy. It's uh, It's been a big job and we've had a, a real big clean up and getting surprised how much uh, crap you hang on to. <laughs> so I've been getting rid of loads of stuff, which feels quite liberating actually. Anyway, this is batch number two. Uh, very healthy fermentation going on. That was after the last um, pressing, which uh, the, the last up upload that I did. So that's all looking good. Uh, batch number one, sorry, here. Uh, I'm going to get some of those brown tag things, so I can write on batch one, two, what have you, uh, and the SG, the well the the original gravity and the final gravity. So this one was 1,045 fermented down to 1,000 and I also tested the acidity sorry the pH and it's 3.3 uh, which is pretty bang on so it should be ideally I think it is between 3.3 and 3.8 so very pleased about that. And a tiny little taste and yeah really interesting some, some uh, nice uh, flavours and some tanning coming through in this one. This one was a thousand and fifty, so slightly more sugar in, I guess, because of those overripe pears. Um, so I, I haven't done any more testing on that. Right, uh, so just wanted to bring you up to speed with that, and then uh, something else uh, I want to do just now. So I'll bring you back shortly. Now, Mike Brotherton from the UK Allotment Channel. I've been talking to Mike and he he thinks his uh, camera and or microphone is very similar to mine and um, he asked he asked specifically whether I would show him the manual well Mike you know that's it um, it's very basic mate that's all I can say switch is there um, the upper switch is plus 20 decibels I think it is the middle one is ordinary so I guess that's just for kind of standard as I'm doing now and then the lower switch is um, minus 10 and I've been told that that's kind of for noisy places or uh, perhaps when there's excessive wind noise traffic noise things of that nature or people cutting grass so it doesn't really give you much more Mike I'm afraid on the uh, instruction manual. I don't, again, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, maybe I need to just the focus on here or something. But uh, it just says pickup sensitivity switch zero decibel is normal pickup status. Minus ten decibel is pickup sensitivity attenuation. It is suitable for short distance vocal pickup. And plus twenty decibel is pickup sensitivity gain. Suitable for long distance vocal pick up and that's about as much information as it gives me I'm sorry so I'm off down the plot now um, Thursday morning so I just wanted to show you before I go down the plot uh, I'm hoping you can make that out the number of flowers on this magnolia that's very very unusual you normally get one you know a few uh, like a second flush but not like that I've never ever seen that before. Yeah, anyway, right, I'm off down the plot, so I'll catch you down there. Okay, so we're down on the plot. And uh, I brought these lettuce seedlings down. I made some sowings, um, I don't know, 10 days, a couple of weeks ago. Interesting to see the difference in rates of germination. These, the hilled two and this one's the broom diva very good germination this winter density by comparison pretty poor actually 
but uh, anyway so I'm going to pop those in the cold frame until they get a bit bigger and then uh, I can transplant them out I might put some inside the greenhouse too, make a bit of a gap and uh, have some under glass, so I'll push on. Now under here is where I had some onions, but I lifted those a couple of days ago and put those inside the greenhouse. So I put this polycarbonate sheet on top just to try and uh, dry the compost out a little bit. It was absolutely ringing wet through, we had that much rain. But uh, what I'm going to do is sow some autumn carrots in here, in these troughs, and then uh, once they've germinated, I'll move them uh, hopefully inside the greenhouse. So this is the bed with the out, uh, Arctic plenty, the bush tomato. It has got blight, it's, got, it's absolutely riddled with blight actually. You can see it all there. Anyway, so what I need to do is clean all this out. There's still some good fruits. The blight has rotted quite a lot, but uh, there's still some very usable fruits. So I'm going to pick all the, the sound fruit off and then uh, just all that um, blight affected uh, material. As we've got a big heap of bonfire over there, so I'm just going to put it on there. So I'm probably going to do that now actually. So I'll, I'll bring you back after. So before I clean this bed up any more. Um, yeah, just a few words about this Arctic Plenty. In terms of uh, yield, it's very good, you know, and uh, some pretty nice sized tomatoes and plenty of them, you know, I mean they're all blighted. You can see there's lots of fruits on there. Uh, Flavour is good when they're done slow roasted, um, when they're just raw, I would say moderate. Uh, would I grow them again? I'm not sure. The only downside is it's um, it's not blight resistant. And if you get a variety like Crimson Crush, which is, well, you know. Uh, but yeah, I do like it. It's a good tomato, so I might grow them again. Perhaps I would try and grow them under glass if I was uh, going to grow them again. Anyway, uh, just a few words about that. And thanks again to Willie Coleman for sending me the seeds. Cheers, mate. Nice one, Willie. And uh, anyway, I'll crack on. And these dwarf French beans need to come out there finished. There's just a few seed pods which I need to collect off them. And then we'll get this bed cleaned up and covered over, probably. So I'll bring you back when I've done that. Okay, so there we go. Bed cleaned up. And actually, when I was cleaning it out, I found uh, one of those elephant garlic bulbils that sprouted so I've potted that up and uh, I'll put that to one side but I think this will be where the next lot of elephant garlic will go so what I'll do is probably just sheet it up temporarily just to stop weeds sprouting and, uh, and then when we're ready next month I'll uh, put the elephant garlic in here So I'll just pick some more cherry tomatoes. They're coming to the end now. You can see the, that's about the size of fruit that I would like. And that's what I was mostly getting, but now they seem to be more this size, which is not really worth bothering with, to be honest. You can see they are very small now, a lot of them. So I might give them another week because uh, I've got croissants to bring in and put all in here to protect them um, uh, the, the later flowering ones threatened from the bad weather and also it looks like there's some signs of blight coming on as well so uh, yeah I might give them another week similarly the big ones here they're probably coming to an end as well but they've done well, they have done well, I've been pleased with those. Okay, so now I need to go and harvest some carrots. So we'll go and have a look at those. Okay, so I've been trying to take the ones from the edges. Stop there so that they frame lid shuts. Yep. 
still edible. Try something else. That's what I mean. The split and then uh, it just makes them vulnerable to slugs getting in. Try another one. That's a better one. Anyway, I'll pull a few out and then I'll, I'll come back to you. Yeah, it's a bit of a mixture really. Different sizes, still very nice carrots though. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure whether that's, there might be a bit usable on it, but, but they'll be usable as well. So on the whole, yeah, I'm st I've got to say that I'm still very pleased with the sweet candle. Yeah, so looking around, there's still plenty of jobs to do. So for example, there's a couple of Savoy cabbage left in there. So probably take those out in the next week or two, and then those lettuces that I brought down earlier, showed you earlier, I should get a nice double row in there and then they'll be nice and protected and like I say if I take those cherry toms out I might be able to put a few in there and then the uh, these are the spring cabbage here again I'm not sure if you can make that out but there's uh, I need to get in and do some weeding but they're looking really good and um, what else leeks have made up really nice now in fact that one looks as yeah that's just running to seed but uh, so I'll, I'll I might even dig that up today and take that but uh, there they're looking quite nice they're ready for harvesting so that would be the first lot there and then uh, I think either that bed or that bed the second lot and then there's some smaller ones there so they should keep us going just going to show you the uh, look at that chard <laughs> ridiculous just looking at these onions it's dried out really nice now so another job soon will be to get those uh, strung up and uh, perhaps I don't know whether I'll, I'll leave the others where they are and then I can start putting some stuff in here. But I don't know, we'll see. Well that's pretty much it for now. Like I say, there's still plenty to do. Uh, with those dwarf French beans. I'm just... Um, actually some of them are flowering again. So... It's possible that I might just get another little bit of a harvest before the cold uh, nights stop them growing but you can see flowers so yeah in fact I did get a little um, a little harvest there so I'll go and show you what uh, I'm taking home bear with me okay so here we go so sweet candle carrots Scarlet Globe Radish, there's that leek that had gone to seed, you can see the... So I just slate it down, take that uh, flower spike out, seed spike, and uh, it'll be perfectly good in a casserole or something like that. Courgettes, they're more kind of the size we'd normally take them, so they'll be nice. Beetroot, again different sizes, multi-sown. Nice bunch of chrysanthemums, still getting some sweet peas, cherry toms, French beans, and blackberries. So that's a nice harvest to take home. And I think uh, in an upcoming upload, I'm going to do an, an update on uh, some of these grafts. Yeah, it's time we had uh, a look back at the trees and stuff. Okay, guys, so we'll leave it there. Thanks very much for watching. Please uh, give me a thumbs up and drop a comment down below. I like to read your comments. And uh, see you later. Bye for now.